Hi everyone, welcome back to Diana, my channel. My name is Yanni and of course Diana and I am so happy you are here. We Again, we have some new DIYs for you. We hope you enjoy a little bit of fun, a little bit of chaos and our DIYs are always very easy to make. So if you like this content, I hope you will consider subscribing to Diana, my channel. And for now, let's jump into our first DIY. So here you see the main things we are going to use for this uh, 4th of July DIY and of course an old a piece of uh, wood from a pallet. Uh, we had four pallets uh, in our home and I thought maybe we can use them for something and of course I torn them all apart. I gave one, one a couple of pieces to Diane and of course we are keeping a couple of pieces and you see here already still the nails are inside of it. I'm going to use to make uh, some firecrackers uh, from so I'm going to measure it out to have three uh, different uh, heights of um, firecrackers so I'm going to measure it out and then we are going to sew it out so here you see already my measurements I made I made a one of 25 centimeters one of 20 and one of 15 so this should be okay and then of course we are going to sew it out and I'm going to do on the cup uh, on, the, on the top of the firecracker I'm going to make a little hole where I can do a little hole <laughs> I, can, I can do uh, some uh, uh, rope in, uh, rope inside of it to use as a top of my fa firecracker so I take you along now to my saw so and before we are going to saw our pieces you have to see my inspiration piece and these are the three firecrackers for 18 euros and 19 cents and it's in dollars it's a little bit like 20 dollars and i think that's a, a lot of money for three firecrackers and of course i'm going to make my own for only a couple of euros so because i only have to do the paint i of course i had the wood for free so i only have to do the paint so let's go on and let's saw our piece So here you see the three pieces I just uh, saw and you see here you can see that it still <laughs> still is from an old palette but I don't mind it gives also a little bit of the rustic feeling and if we paint it and of course you can work it away with some um, speckle or with something else to make it smooth but I don't uh, mind so what I'm going to do right now give them uh, a color I will paint the big one blue the this one red and this one white so I'm going to do a first coat on top of them and then we are going to see how it will look so like I said I will do the first uh, one I will do in the blue but I'm going to do the uh, darker blue because uh, I love a little bit of the more darker feeling uh, darker feeling <laughs> is that a word <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of the rustic and the warmer feeling so that's why I'm going to, to do a little bit of the darker blue but of course you can do any color you like if you even do, don't want to have it for the 4th of July you still can uh, give it an all an, uh, another color you can give it the white or black and distress it a little bit and you also have three pieces a little bit more like the farmhouse style I love that also very much so you see I am uh, a little bit busy with the uh, colors and I won't bore you with that so I'm showing you when they all three of them have a color so here you see already my blocks are already almost dried up and I'm going to keep them very simple I will keep them with an old rustic uh, flag on top of it with some twine and some twine uh, wig on top of it and then are they for me they are already uh, finished because I love a little bit more of the rustic and the neutral way but of course you can go uh, any way you want uh, I found some 
uh, three tags already laying around I cut them out a while ago and I did already paint them in the black color but of course I will give them a black dark uh, blue dark red and a white color because I'm going to use them also for the 4th of July and they are very easy to use in your tear tray and I show you the my uh, inspiration piece I already have you see here this one for almost uh, 38 euros it's a little bit like 40 uh, dollars for two little tags so I found that a very very expensive so if you see already I had it for scrap wood and I painted them in a the color and it's almost only the paint you have to um, pay for but for the rest you can do a little print and you already fit to go so of course I will do a print on top of here but you see that in a moment but first I'm going to paint them so you see already my texts are almost dried and also my drug, my blocks are already dried. What we need uh, to do uh, right now is just make a little um, picture for on top of our text and of course on top of our blocks. And then we can finish them off. So come along with me. So you see here, these are the prints I uh, eventually did. I did one with some fireworks and of course the head from Uncle Sam, if I am correct, is it called. And of course by the American flag, the 4th of July. I really love how you decorate with for the 4th of July. There is so much on the internet on Google to make your own signs. So I'm going to use these three for my tags. And for my blocks, I'm going to use the flags because, I, of course, I will cut some of them in uh, to fit uh, on my blocks. And I'm going to use them also with some twine around it. But I'm uh, keeping it very simple on top of the my, my firecrackers because I know my firecrackers are a little bit wider than... <laughs> <laughs> the normal fire quick is probably this way but I think the, <laughs> the mine will turn out great also but we will see so first I'm going to do I will cut everything out and then we're going to mud part it on top of our text and on our black blocks <laughs> So you see, I did cut everything out for my text and of course my three um, pieces for on top of my blocks. So what I'm going to do right now is going to mud podge uh, everything uh, on, uh, on the place where it has to be and then I'm going to let it dry. So you see here, I'm just doing the front with a little bigger uh, brush to give it a very easy <laughs> way to get by picture uh, on top of it and of course I'm doing the rest of the tag also because or else you get uh, one is shining and one is not shining so I'm going to place it on my tag and just a little bit in the middle of course and I have to work away a little bit of the wrinkles at least I'm always try to get no wrinkles but like I always say, one time it works, the other time it doesn't. So I think sometimes it's also a question of having, <laughs> having luck, <laughs> luck, I think. So you see, he is already turning out nice. So this one can dry. I will do the rest of it and then I show you how they are looking like after the mud patching. So you see everything is standing in the mod podge right now and <laughs> some pieces look, I, that I hope, that the wrinkles will go away. <laughs> but we are going to see some pieces are really fine and some pieces give, but I always say it gives also an old look so <laughs> it doesn't matter. So after, after thing, everything is dried we are going to uh, get some twine and we're going to do a piece on top of it and on the other side of our block, the uh, one over here and a couple of turns over here. And then we are going to make our wig from our uh, firecrackers of course. But first we have to wait until it's dried. So what I'm going to do uh, is make a wig of, uh, for my, uh, of course for my firecracker. But I'm just going to take such a, a little piece and I did take seven, um, seven strands of it. So I'm just turning it a couple of times. So I am sure that I have uh, seven of it. So you see, I just, and now I am 
cutting it off and of course I just on one side I am cutting off also the little loops it made so you have seven pieces on the top what I'm going to do right now is just turn it around squeeze this together take a little piece of rope again just lay it this way and I'm just going to turn it around around the on the side because I want this inside of my little hole I made for my wig and now I'm going to cut it off and of course I'm just going to glue this with a little piece of glue but you can use anything you like just fold it in just wait a moment until it is dried and I'm just going, to, just going to turn it around and just make a nice and of course this one is a little bit too long I will cut it in the, in the size I need but you see oh, it <laughs> you see already it is <laughs> look, it's looking already a little bit like a wig I'm just cutting off this little piece and I think I need uh, not more than this piece and then you see I have a little uh, piece of twine over here and I'm going to do it stop it uh, stop it now <laughs> I'm just going to place it inside of the little hole and then I have a little piece which is coming uh, above because I really like it to give it a little bit of feel of it is a knot on top of it so this is a little bit how I make my wigs but of course there are much better ways to, <laughs> to make a wig for your firecracker but I just wanted to show you mine so here you see how my firecrackers turned out and I am really happy with the end result and of course you also can make a little display on top of it in your tray and the main thing is because I know the picture is a little bit different like uh, the picture on my inspiration piece but uh, I always say you can make it your own unique uh, home decor because or else you have <laughs> totally <laughs> copy it and I really love to make something of your own but you see it is so much easier to make a home decor for a lot less here you see my three tags I did and also this one were from Scrapwood and also almost costed nothing a print, some mud pots and some paint and you are ready fit to go and you have your own unique pieces you can use them in your tea tray you can use them in your kitchen on a wreath you can use them for anything I had so much fun making this and like I say Diane and I for everyone who is celebrating the 4th of July in a, in a little more than a month I wish you all a beautiful happy 4th of July with your family and I had a lot of fun making our DIYs So before we go further for, to our next DIY, I have to tell you that this video is also part of a challenge video hosted by the lovely Yami from the Latina next door. So go check out her beautiful channel. I place a link down below for her lovely channel. And of course, I will place a link down below with the playlist with tons of beautiful inspiration for you to find. Like I always say, let's jump into our second DIY. Hey, it's Diane here. I'm going to make a 4th of July DIY. This is the original one. Showing it here on my mobile phone. 4th of July, two cute houses for, well, you can see the price in euros here. And I hope that I can do it for free, starting with these two blocks made out of pellet wood. This was a pellet before, but now it has been sewed out into smaller blocks. 
And I'm going to take the right measurements and then I'm going to sew it with the power. So here is the idea. Uh, these are going to be three houses. I'm going to make it a little bit different than in the picture. And now I'm going to use the power saw to sew the right measurements. So here are the cute houses. Time to glue these pieces together just like this and then you get really cute houses. Um, I'm going to use wood glue for this job which takes quite a time to dry so yeah I'll be back with you when everything is dry. A really tiny tip if you're uh, done sewing to keep the sets together I numbered them one one in the same edge where they need to be glued together. This is set number two and here you see three and three. The houses are done, all drying well. Now it's time to cover them in some paint. I want to make one red, one white and one in blue. Now like to paint the houses, I have the colors which I want to use over here. All these things are acrylic paint. Uh, this one is two, but this one just has a different kind of bottle. Um, I have the right blue and of course the white color, but the red, this is a little bit too fierce, so I want to mix it up with a little bit of black to create a more you know, realistic color of the flag. So first I want to paint, well, let's see, yeah, this one white. If at least the package wants to open up. Shake a little bit before I start using it because I haven't been using it for a time. Let me see. Well, first start off with this. Just brush it into the house. You can also use chalk paint if you want to. That is totally up to you. But today I felt more of an acrylic painter than a chalk painter. The white house is done, it's standing here, I'm letting it dry. Now I want to use the blue paint here. It says vintage paint, but it's just acrylic paint. Uh, these paint, by the way, and also the brushes, all come from Action. Similar to the shop to Dollar Tree here in the Netherlands. Now, let's just pour some paint over the wood. Normally you see me using chalk paint for white projects. But today I'm using acrylic paint and the reason why I want to do that is because the red and the blue paint are also acrylic ones and I'm a little bit afraid that you're going to see a different finish after the paint is dry with the two separate projects and I really don't want that to happen because the projects need to be you know together as one set so that's why I chose to use white acrylic paint and not chalk paint for this DIY. But if you have other colors chalk paint, then that is totally up to you. Do whatever you want. We just want to give you some inspiration. And yeah. Okay, blue is done too. Now it's time to mix the red paint with a little bit of black. Therefore, I will be using the small container um, because I think I'm going to use that kind of red color more than once. So I want to store it and keep it for later use. I'm going to mix up quite something of the paint. Well, let's start off with this. Oh. Like so. Now first we add just a little, little, little bit of black, not too much. Just a really tiny drop that gets in there. Now let's just mix it up and see what kind of color we get. If it is too light, then we pour in some more red. If it is too dark, then we add a little bit red 
or us, I'm saying it again, if it's <laughs> if it's too light, then we add a little bit more black. If it's too dark, then we add some more red. And that is the great thing about acrylic paint. It's really easy to mix. Yeah, I think this color looks perfect. It's just slightly darker than the color that comes out of the package. Now, I see some black mixes at the sides, so here as well. I think now I have the perfect black color, or black <laughs> red color. Sorry, I don't know what it is with my English today. It's really, I'm messing things up. So, now we can start painting the house. And really, if we're done, just add the cap and then you are ready to reuse and store the paint again. I can see it better if I hopefully hold it into the light. This is the red color from the package itself. This is my mixed up color. I really hope you can see it. It's just a little bit darker. And that is exactly what I wanted to achieve. So now I'll just start painting the house. And then I'm going to let dry everything. And I start looking at the white house, not the real white house in America, but the white painted house here. And I think it needs a lot, uh, another coat of paint. Because, yeah, the white is really sheer, you can easily see through. So, just think I need to paint it again. Don't know if the red will turn out. The blue one is okay, but the white one just needs a little bit extra. Okay, now it is time to decorate those houses and that I want to do according to these patterns. This is for the red one, this is for the white one, this is my own farmhouse edition, my extra DIY, and the stars are for the blue house. Okay, I'm done cutting out all the things that I want to glue upon the houses, but yeah, actually now we'll take a look at it. You can really see a difference here in the glued parts, so what I want to do, I'll take some twine and my glue gun. And I'm going to put some twine just here, wrap it around several times. So we cover up that ugly, you know, part between the two separate pieces of wood. So the first two houses are ready. Look how cute they are. They are so much neater now. The white one, I still have to do that one, but that one is going to be different. Uh, first, I want to take out the stars. This is really such tiny figures and I'm going to mock potch them upon the blue house so here we go you take some mock potch I by the way used the stars with the black line in front of me so when I put them upon the house this tap. I think it needs a little bit of glue here on this top. Because now you have really clean stars, if you know what I mean. I use a dry brush, gently wipe my design up on the house, and I have really sharp stars without any lines. So I just continue doing this to all the stars. Oh, there's a little bit too much put there. Let me see. I'll just put them up on randomly. There isn't much of a pattern. But you can do that, of course, if you like that. That is totally up to you. Jen and I just want to give you some inspiration. And here's the other one. Don't forget to wipe out the air with a soft brush. Don't push too hard. And this looks really cute. So this is number one. This one is done. Now the red one is a little bit harder for me because this one contains a number and letters. And that is not my strongest job, you know, phones, typing, even writing it down out of your, you know, hands, that is simply not my cup of tea. So I use paper for this job. Oh, some glue attached here. And I think the four belongs here. I made the background 
red of the white paper. Okay, now I'm going to do the... Oh, this is such tiny paper. T and H. And then the last one is July. Not July. Okay, there goes July. There we go. This is a white house I used twine to wrap around the silhouette of the house. So it gives a little bit more body. Now I want to add the Statue of Liberty to this house. Let me see, is this the front side? Yes, this is the best side, the smoothest one. Because the back was a little bit rougher. Also needed to file a lot of the wood away after sawing it out. Simply because you know, there were so many splinters, but that is of course because you're working with a natural product. A little bit more over here. Of course, I'm going to seal afterwards. Okay, there's Mod Podge all around. Now we need to check if everything is in the center. And if it's, of course, straight, not completely. A little bit more to this side, otherwise the arm doesn't fit in. Maybe I should have printed it a little bit smaller. Let me check, yes, this is okay. Now I'll start brushing from down to the top. Look how smooth and nice this turns out. All the edges are marked well. So this is what you get. This is a totally unique item. This is a bonus item. And these two are dupes of the one, the ones we saw online. Of course, we must not forget to seal our designs. So I'm just taking a little bit of Mod Podge. This is my smallest brush. Try to work as neat as possible. And I see from the twine I need to cut off some of the hairs that are coming off. Because now it looks like some twine with a bad hair day. Oh. Quickly wipe away the excess mop potch. Also a good idea to have a dry brush at hand. So you can wipe away on places where you spilled some potch. Where you definitely don't want that to be. Just like so, I'm going to continue with all of the stars. And here you see all the cute houses together upon the table. I really like how it turned out. I hope you do as well. Let us know in the comment section which one is your favorite. And believe it or not, this was a totally free DIY. And the middle one here is, of course, one bonus. It is extra. So yeah, I think it's a great savings here. Let us know what you think of this DIY. So this were already our new DIYs. We hope you just had fun and take a little bit of inspiration with you. Diane and I are always so thankful that you take a little piece of your day to watch a little bit of our video. So thank you all for that. And of course, if you like this content and you like, like I always say, a little bit of chaos, we hope you will consider subscribing to Diane and my channel. We wish you all a beautiful, beautiful day. Stay safe, take care of yourself and take care of each other. And we hope to see you in our next video. Love from the enemy. Bye everyone.